I want to look at this festival called Shavuot. For those of you that come from a, a church background, it's literally where you get the word Pentecost. Penta is the Greek phrase meaning 50. It comes after a 50-day season called the Counting of the Omer. And this is, in fact, in my opinion, a very powerful set-apart. It's a unique holy convocation. And if you go back and look at that word convocation in the Hebrew language, it's mikrah. And it literally indicates a season where you have been called to a place. You've literally been summoned. Just like from a legal mindset in today's world, you're issued a summons to appear before a man's court. This is a season when Abba issues a summons for you to appear before him. The Sabbath is a holy convocation. All of these festivals that are outlined in Leviticus 23 fall under that umbrella. And when you arrive to this place called the Mikra, the place of the calling, the season of calling, it's so that Father can develop in you the thing that he has planned for you since you were being formed in your mother's womb. And there is a destiny in front of his people that we are being called to live and aspire towards. Listen to me. We are to reach towards the mark of the prize of the high calling of our Messiah, Yeshua. And so as we look at this festival called Shavuot, I don't think we can really understand it unless we realize what's transpired in the patterns, if you will, or the blueprint in the counting of the Omer, that 50-day season after the weekly Shabbat, which occurs after Passover, there, there's a season <clears throat> that leads us to where we are now. Shavuot or Pentecost is also a season called the Yovel or the Jubilee. It's the season when you can be set free. You, you can't be forced to be set free. It's actually a mindset. You can be in physical chains and bondage, but if your mind is free, you are free. And Abba wants us to be set free in our minds first because if my physical man is set free and my mind is still in change in chains then I am not able to enjoy the yovel or the jubilee that belongs to me and I'm convinced that what Abba's doing is he's teaching us incrementally about how to access our inheritance how to conduct ourselves as kingdom people and how to make an application in our lives of what he is about to relish to relinquish to restore back to his people. How many of you believe that the old mantra that we've heard for generations now, the wealth of the sinners laid up for the righteous? How many of you believe that? Well, we'll touch on that this afternoon, and I find that it's in, literally wrapped up in the Yovel season. And so what I'd like to do before we look at the festival of Shavuot, I'd like to look at this season called the Sephirat HaOmer, the counting of the Omer. It's a phrase that's actually taken from two very important and key words. The first word is safar, and it does, in fact, indicate to count, and that's what we do. We count every day, 50 days, cyclically, until we reach the season where we're at now. And I don't think it's an accident that our Messiah chose this season, the counting of the Omer, to walk 40 days with his disciples, his Talmudim, and then he tells them the last few days, he tells them, you go wait in Jerusalem until you're endued with power from on high. There's something about this festival of Shavuot that has the, the ability to endue you with a supernatural power that you can't otherwise normally walk in. <clears throat> I think that I would like to have that. It indicates to take a reckoning of something. That word there, to take a reckoning, means you need to pay close attention. It is admonishing you to keep your eyes open, to emulate or copy by association what you see happening in front of you. It also indicates to recount or to rehearse, to scribe, to speak or to tell something out loud. And further, it indicates an individual who is charged as a scribe for the military and this individual is charged with keeping the muster rolls of those individuals who are capable, capable and qualified fighting men. This is the season, in my opinion, this counting of the Homer, when Abba is pulling away some of the things that's in our lives, exposing some things, dealing with the fluff, dealing with the, the tears, dealing with the, the dross, 
and bringing us to a place where our lives can be purified before him so that when we stand ready at the festival of Shavuot, when that outpouring of power, that endowment with power comes from him, then you will be a capable fighting man or woman, if you will, able of taking care of the Father's business. The numeric value of that word so far is 340, and it's not an accident because it has the same numeric value as the word Shem, meaning name. That word Shem indicates not just my name, David, because if all you understand is that that's an appellation that's, a pa- that's attached to me, you don't understand the character of that name. But if you hang around me for any length of time, you know that with the name comes the character and the personality that has been built in me for 60-something years. And so when you realize that there's a connection in this counting of the Omer with understanding the nature and character of the name that you're about to step under when the Shavuot season comes and you're about to receive your inheritance, he's going to look and see if your name's on the muster rolls. And if your name's on the muster rolls and you have access to that inheritance, then you're going to receive the name upon you and you're going to be molded, more molded, and shaped into the name than ever in created history. Yahweh is raising up a group of individuals in the season that we're living in that are going to be champions of the Most High. Can you say amen? amen? Daniel says it this way. Those in the days that are in front of us, rather than cowering in fear, rather than being worried and frustrated and overwhelmed and confused and depressed and oppressed and impressed, Yahweh says that those that know Him will do great exploits. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, I can't wait to see what you do for the king. Can you imagine what it'll be like when those that you've been raised up with in the kingdom start walking down the street and their shadows fall on the masses and people are healed and there's no jealousy between us. There's no strife. There's no contention. We All we want to do is to see the best that Abba has demonstrated, poured into that man, poured out in honor of the king. This is what this season is about. The counting of the Omer is a season that whatever's been poured inside you is going to be called, is going to cause you to be broken and that that's in there is going to be poured out. Can you say amen? If you look at this root stem of the word safar or safer, it's the same as the word for book. The psalmic pay root hints at a threshold as in a covenant called a threshold covenant. It's closely related to the, the psalmic pay is closely related to the sheen pay root which indicates your lips. I want you to, I want you to get what I'm about to share with you in the next couple of verses. It indicates your lips as a border or a threshold. In other words, I have to guard these lips more than anything. But my mind, as I subjugate my mind and my mind is renewed and I bring my mind under control to the spirit of Yahweh and his word, I have to guard these lips because whatever comes across this border, whatever breaks the seal of this womb right here is birthed in front of me and I become its daddy. Are you hearing me? And so if you take the sheen pay and set it aside, it leaves you with the Hebrew letter resh, which indicate that's what, that which comes behind or that which follows after. In other words, listen to me very carefully. Don't let the enemy or don't let your flesh distract you. These three letters indicate that the covenant of your lips, whatever you covenant with your mouth is going to follow after you. Did you hear what I just said? Do you remember what our Messiah said about you and I? He said, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name, in my Shem. Listen to me. You have signs following you this afternoon that indicate what your covenant has been throughout your lifestyle. And if you're not satisfied with the signs that have been following you, this is the season when you can break out and break free and be set free and make teshuvah. The definition of those three letters could also be interpreted as the covenant as at the end of the days. In other words, you're here now, and I believe we're literally living in what we would commonly refer to as the end days. And your lips are going to indicate if you have a covenant with the king that is going to sustain you in the days ahead. And let me share this with you. Your words 
counting those words, being concerned with those words, watching over those words are important because words are eternal. We used to have this little phrase when I was a child, and I remember it to, to this day, and I used to think that, wow, I can agree with that, but now I've changed my mind. It used to say, sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. That's a lie. Words are more powerful than the sticks and stones. We have to learn. This is why we're here now, because when we get to the place where the, the mantle, the anointing of the Ruach HaKodesh is about to be poured out, you need to be a covenant prepared vessel. Can you say amen? You are literally living out what's been coming out of your mouth. And I thought, my goodness, that reminds me of Mark, the 11th chapter, when he says, if you have the faith, you can speak to the mountain and you can say, mountain, be removed from in front of me and be cast into the sea. If you don't doubt in your heart, but if you believe what you say, you will have what you say. My goodness, my goodness, for 62 years, I've been having exactly what I've been prophesying out of my own mouth. A lot of that I'm not satisfied with, and so I've used Yahweh's word as an instrument to go in and excise those things in my life, the tears that have been buried in the wheat of his word and extricate them out and cast them to the side and I'm making a declaration that the words that come out of my mouth are going to be words that are watched over. If you rearrange those letters, you'll get the the Samic pay resh, you can rearrange it to pay resh Samic, and it gives you the word paras, which indicates to split or divide. And I thought, isn't that ironic? Because if there's ever a season when division is more rampant than any other, it's the season when we should be counting the words, and yet we look at the curse side of it words are dividing, words are causing chaos, words are splitting. Words are breaking apart the union of the Most High. Are you hearing what I'm saying with you this afternoon? And while I was there, Yahweh began to develop something in my spirit, man, about the Peresh Samic root. It's also the root of the word Paras, from which we get Persia, which is the name of the nation that is very prominent in today's news, also known as Iran. I want you to let that settle in your mind for a second and, and let it steep there because we're going to look at it carefully in just a few moments. Sifarat HaOmer. I want to look at the next word in our study. It's the word Omer or Omer. And it's rendered as a sheaf, a heap, or a dry measure. But on the other hand, that same heap, listen to me carefully, that same sheaf of seed that you've gathered called an Omer, can also be translated as something that is used to manipulate, to deal as a dictator tyrannically with someone else in order to use that sheaf of words that you've heaped up and that you've carefully watched over and nurtured and now it's the time for you to harvest it and gather it and pay attention to those same words can be used to subdue and treat others as lesser individuals and as slaves are you hearing what's happening I believe with all my heart that we're about to see arrive on the scene one that's called the Antimashiach and he's going to be revealed as the most tyrannical of all dictators that the world has ever seen aside from Hasatan himself and whether you realize what I'm about to share with you or not it is the spoken words of the masses that's going to echo what Shepherd John just said because just as surely as our Messiah is enthroned upon the praises of his people, there is one called the Antimashiach who's coming and he will not take his throne in the earth until the masses in the earth begin to enthrone him with their praise. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh, I would never be involved in that. I would never do that. I would never desecrate the word of Almighty. <laughs> But yet, look around you and consider the words that we have spoken in our own lives. Words that have become weeds 
Words that have become tares. Words that have caused the ground to, to no longer be fertile. Words that have caused our lives to be such that when we look at our lives, literally, we cannot be satisfied. If we look at it in the mirror is Yahweh's word. Are you hearing me? In summation, Omer is cognate with the word Amar, which means to say or to speak. And in particular, it indicates the carefully chosen words of one, one's own mouth. And so I'm asking you, is it possible, considering this counting of the Omer season leading up to Shavuot, is it possible that it, a day in the future that a proclamation issued forth from the crowned Antimashiach will be received or released by him during a, a future Shavuot season? Because it was at Shavuot that we received the terms of our wedding covenant with our Mashiach. Is it possible that at a future Shavuot just in front of us, listen to me, and I'm not talking about ten generations down the road. I'm talking about now you don't have time to go back and, and waver with your decision. Now is the time to not procrastinate, but to make the decisions that Abba has called you to make that he's been speaking in your spirit, man, because the enemy is about to issue his own proclamation. He's about to give his own ketubah to his bride. And that's why we're being admonished to come out of her, come out of her. And when he's speaking to his people and he's telling you to come out of her, it's indicating that, yes, we have been deeply entrenched in her, the harlot. And if we don't come out, we're going to be visited with her plagues. It's a hard thing to hear. But it's the truth nonetheless. Be encouraged, my friends, because this is a season that is defining who you are. And so as we look at the definitions of Sifarat Ho'omer, the counting of the Omer season, it gives us some insight regarding the captain of the host, the one who keeps a record of a muster roll of those that's capable of fighting in his army. And he numbers them. He knows who they are. This is the season right now, the season that you're in. The season that's led us up to Shavuot today, it's the season of order. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, if you ain't got your house in order now, it's a little bit late. You said it. You saw, I don't know if anybody said that or not. Did I, must, did I go deaf at that time? It's a season of order. It's a season of training for warfare for those who would be called to stand under the banner of the name of the Most High. It's the season just before the release of your inheritance when those of you who, are, who will have been ordered by his word, trained in his word, it's the season when you're being taught and trained how to handle the logistics of a true jubilee release that's coming. That ought to make you want to shout. It's also interesting because as we take the measure of our own words, it's also the season when things that are, are happening take the measure of those who are easily divided, who are easily manipulated. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, I'm not going to be easily manipulated. Tell them, I got a stiff backbone. We used to say back home, most people in, that I know that, are, that call themselves believers, their backbone's like a water hose. What do you do when you put pressure to a water hose? It's just like they just flop. All, whatever, whichever way the pressure is, I'm going to flop. How many times, Shepherd John, have you had people come to you and said, I'm standing with you, brother. Heard from Yahweh. Told me to come over here and strike my hand with yours. Where are they at now? Folded, collapsed under the pressure. It's the season of taking the measure of those who would take advantage of others. It's the season of your words. And if your words are either blessings or curses, this is the season of either purification or defilement. It's the season of either your release or your enslavement. And both of those are going to be predicated upon the words that come out of your mouth. That's why this is the season when you're being taught how to come out of Babylon. Are you hearing me? This is, to me, this is the most exciting season that we have ever been in. Most of you are familiar with Shavuot. You know that it, at Shavuot, the house of Israel were formally given the Torah, the wedding vows. But if what I just shared with you is true and the definition of those words are true, 
listen to me carefully, I believe with all my heart that Yahweh didn't bring Israel to the mountain to give them something they had never heard before. I believe that they had the word, the living word rehearsed to them from Adam forward. And I believe that they were brought to Mount Sinai at the Shavuot encounter with him so that they could decide in their hearts whether or not they were going to respond to the covenant promises of Yahweh or they were not. I believe that this is the season when they had the opportunity to consider the promised word to them and what their response was going to be when they would hear those words echoed by the Most High and Israel cried out as one, all that you have said we will do. Abba's given us an opportunity to consider his words, the promises. How many of you have had a personal revelation, a personal promise? And it doesn't have to be something that you can share out with with us publicly. But how many of you have had a word from him that you know was a word from him? Even in the New Testament, it tells tells us that you can make war with those prophesied things, those prophetic words that were given to you. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. And the word of our testimony, the word of our testimony is what comes out of our mouth. And we live, listen to me, like it or not, we live what's stored on the inside of us. You are nothing but a, turn to your neighbor and tell them, you're nothing but a sack of words. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony, and we love not our lives even under death. I am crucified with Messiah. Nevertheless, I live... Yet not I, but it's the Messiah who lives in me. Why? It's because his word has to be in here. This is the season that you and I are in now. This is a season of transformation. We came out of Egypt, an enslaved group of people. For generations, we had endured the bondage and the chastisement. The debasement, the defilement. We'd lost our identity. We did not know who we were. And yes, we were set free when the plagues occurred. And we were set free from the natural. But there was something regarding having our minds transformed and renewed that needed to transpire between the time that we would meet our intended husband, the king of the creation, the groom who would unite us with him. And together we would rule the earth and the kingdom of the Messiah would literally be established on earth. There was an opportunity for us to hear those words and rehearse them in our minds and down inside our spirit man and take a measure of them. Not that it's something that you would just trifling say, oh yes, he said that I'm going to do it. But now you're going to walk this out. For 50 days we walk this out and there's trials and there's tribulation. There's all kinds of oppression. There's things that's happening to break those things off of you and it's not pleasant. Giving us an opportunity to hear the words of the Most High. I want you to pay attention because this is going to take sort of a, a strange turn Many of you are anticipating, today we're actually celebrating the Yovel season, Shavuot, Pentecost, the season of release. Take a deep breath. And I want you to say this with me. This is the season of my release. I don't know if you can sense what the Holy Spirit's doing, but some of you need to be set free. This is the season of your release. The Yovel, the Jubilee, it's the season when the jubilation of the saints begins to reach such a crescendo, such a magnificent proclamation coming forth from those that are enjoying the Jubilee that it reaches the heavens and and gets the attention of creation and shatters the ears of those who would be opposed to him. Shavuot is a, in my opinion, is one of the most, even though the church world and the Pentecostal world, charismatics, Hebrew roots, 
the Jewish community, we celebrate Shavuot, but I don't think that we really have understood the impact that it's about to have on us. It's a holy convocation of seven sevens. Shavua. Seven sevens. 49 days followed by a 50th day wherein all those that were in slavery and in debt and all who had lost their inheritance are restored. Let me ask you something. Regardless of whether you put your hand to it yourself and cause the, the bondage that your family, your family name, your family lineage is currently involved in or it was grandfathered down to you, regardless of that, this is the season when your release is about to take place. There are many of us that have children and grandchildren and family members that are not where they want to be or where they should be with the most high. This is a season when your ability, your standing in the courtroom of the Creator has changed and you can go into the courtroom of creation as an advocate on behalf of those individuals. You will have power of eternity, of eternity, of eternity to act on their behalf in their stead and go into the courtroom of creation and make some declaration against the accuser of the brethren and make that same declaration that was given to the children of Israel. Let my people go. This is a season. The Sabbath connection to Shavuot is one that has to be understood. I believe if you don't understand, I don't care how Pentecostal you are. You can be a holy rolling tongue talking, back flipping, charismatic. But if you don't understand the Sabbath, the Shavuot connection will not merit anything to you. And it, listen to me. Listen to me carefully. It will not only be difficult for you to understand the Yovel season that is on the horizon for us, it might also hinder you from accessing the Shabbat millennium, the Sabbath millennium, which is also a Yovel season. How could you say that? Why could I say that? Because I am telling you that in front of us there's going to be some declarations made by the enemy. Some words that are going to be vomited out of the enemy's mouth. Revelation 12 likens it unto a flood that is launched against a woman and her child. And if it was not for the intervention of the Most High, even the very elect would be deceived. You are arrogant and you're prideful and you're heady and you're high minded and you've been trifling with the things that belong to the most high and now this is a season of reckoning he's looked at your account and the books are about to be settled and I say unto you from the most high that I will weigh you in the balance and you will be found lacking the Sabbath is the eternal key that sets the precedent for the way we consider, for the way we count the seven-day week, the months, because there is a Yovel season during the seventh month. <laughs>